For those of you who don't know about the 1619 Project, really briefly, it is it started with a New York Times piece about how the origins of the United States were was it was actually not the Declaration of Independence and the Revolution that was the origin of the United States, but uh, 1619 when slaves came from when slave, the first slaves were brought from Africa to uh, the colonies at the time, and slavery was uh, central to the founding of America, America's history, and and really the. It, it minimizes any founding principles that are written down and any of the actual things founding fathers said and and really emphasizes that it, it tries to paint slavery as a uniquely American and uh, uniquely uh, woven into the foundation of America and and then by doing so undermining the principles of freedom and individual liberty and all the good things that America was was founded upon that it didn't live up to fully until it abolished slavery and got away uh, and you know got rid of Jim Crow laws and other ho abhorrent things. And I thought today would be a good day, Carrie. If you don't mind, can I read a few excerpts? I I just looked up. I did not cherry pick and look up like specifically abolitionists that liked the founding principles of the of the country. I just looked up like top abolitionist speeches. Not all of them have speeches that are transcribed that you can you can really parse, um, but uh, I looked up abolitionist speeches and I'd like to read if it's okay. I'd like to read a couple excerpts because my the point I'm going to make here is if you'll notice the abolitionists, all of well I don't know if all of them but the major ones were appealing to they weren't rejecting the founding of America, they weren't saying no, they that appealed. Yeah. They appealed to it. They, they were appealing to the principles that were outlined in the founding documents. And so, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read a couple. And uh, Please do. This is, all right. this is something great. I, I'm glad, I wish I had thought of this. This is great to do in honor of Juneteenth. I think so. Because, because yeah. look, at the end of the day, I guess the preface to this is uh, individualism is the antidote to slavery. And individualism is, you know... Instead of trying to, instead of having a race war, we should be uniting against the, the tyrants, the authoritarians that are trying to destroy uh, individual rights in this country and subjugate all of us. Uh, and they're afraid of us uniting in individualism, in freedom, uh, against them. And so they're tr they're busy trying to conjure up a race war between us. And uh, we're smarter than that. We don't have to succumb to this kind of crap. So let's. So here we go. Henry Highland Garnet, uh, and in 1843 address, he's, I have I have three speeches. I'm gonna quote. One is his. One's uh, William Lloyd Garrison, and the last one is Frederick Douglass, which is my favorite one. Um, so William Lloyd Garrison in 1854 in Boston. He was uh, the most prominent. Pro by 1854, he was probably the most. Um, Oh, well, let's not start with him, sorry. Let's start with Henry Highland, 1843. Um, he, he, he had an, an address to the slaves of the United States. Now, this address is actually quite stirring. He's telling the slaves to revolt. He's saying, like, you need to fight this physically. It's a, it's a moving speech, and it's a, it's a morally... Uh, 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 what's the word? Praiseworthy, laudable. It's a morally laudable speech. It's a, it's a, it's a good message, and, and it's a strong message. But even in this message, I'm just going to read a couple excerpts. He's talking about uh, prior to the actual founding, but in the colonial system. Uh, he says, The propagators of the system or their immediate ancestors very soon discovered its growing evil and its tremendous wickedness, and secret promises were made to destroy it. So he's talking about people saying they're going to destroy slavery. The gross inconsistency of a people holding slaves who had themselves ferried o'er the wave for freedom's sake was too apparent to be entirely overlooked. The voice of freedom cried, emancipate yourself. So what he's saying is, even prior to the founding, people recognized the inconsistency between the principles of freedom that were being argued for and the institution of slavery that was being tolerated and even supported in some case. Later he says, the Declaration, now he's talking about the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration was a glorious document. Sages admired it, and the patriotic of every nation reverenced the God like sentiments which it contained. When the power of government returned to their hands, did they emancipate the slaves. So and he's saying, like, it's a great document, 
But did they, did they emancipate the slaves? No. They added new links to our chains. Were they ignorant of the principles of liberty? Again, he's not fighting against principles of liberty. Were they ignorant against the principle of the principles of liberty? Certainly they were not. The sentiments of the revolutionary orders fell in burning eloquence upon their hearts, and with one voice they cried, liberty or death. Oh, what a sentence was that. It ran from soul to soul like electric fire and nerved the arm of thousands to fight in the holy cause of freedom. Among the diversity of opinions that are entertained in regard to physical resistance, there are but a few found to gainsay that stern declaration. We are among those who do not. So he's saying, hey, li liberty or death is a, uh, is a beautiful, noble, um, just phrase. And he's not opposed to liberty or death. He's using this to spur them to actual physical action. And then finally, he says, think of the underlying glory that hangs around the ancient name of Africa and forget not. Now, this he's talking to blacks, by the way. He's talking to slaves. This is one thing unique about his address is he was talking directly to slaves about revolt. He says, forget not that you are native-born American citizens, and as such, you are justly entitled to all the rights that are granted to the freest. That's his argument. That's his argument. It's not tear down the Constitution. It's not, uh, it's not the Constitution and freedom are tools of white supremacy. It is, you are owed these things. All men are owed these things. You included, S rise up and seize them like you deserve. That's his message. It's a beautiful message. Um, and it, I assume it was very powerful.